Junji Ito man is is like crazy. Like his Yeah, I love it. I I'm not too keen on scary stuff, but like I like his stuff. Yeah, I've only ever read um Uzumaki, so um I've never read anything else. But I I yeah. the famous ones are I guess are Tomi and Uzumaki and uh, another one. Yeah. And and um uh, Gio I think that's what it's called. Gyo. G- uh, G- uh, yeah, Gyo. Yeah. The yeah, fish. Yeah, I the one have with the that. Fish. I have I have the first volume for that one, but I haven't I haven't read it yet because it got ruined kind of, and yeah. I'm like I'm like in that phase where like if it got ruined, I kind of just want to buy a new one. Like, look at that cover. So, that by itself is unsettling, and it's just a picture of a girl. It's just a picture of Tomi. Like, oh yeah, it's, like, the, it's the art style too. Like, mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I want to get. I want to get a tattoo of his art style. Oh god. I either want. I either want like I've been really like leaning towards um Tom. You know, you know, an Uzumaki with the girl with the with that mole on her forehead, but the spiral on her forehead, and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. And and it's just like kind of like I want I want the the picture of like where the spiral was like it got so big that like ha- it's like consumes her... like half her half her eye yeah her eyeballs like sitting yeah. in the midst of it yeah here i'll find it yeah that's a yeah, really that's yeah. a really famous image yeah, it's the first yeah. picture yeah it's pretty awesome there you go yeah there it is i want that there was I a fucking want that. there was a japanese fashion designer who made enamel pins out of it and then a bunch of other chinese and american companies made pins out of it Without yeah. permission, of course, I'm sure. But mm-hmm. of course, yeah. But yeah, no, it's really unsettling yeah. because there should be yeah. like, it's, it's that's such a weird fucking thing. Like, oh, I'm gonna write a story, a horror story where this town gets cursed with spirals by spirals. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, yeah. let us know when you get that done. And then he like shows it to you, <laughs> shows it to the publisher, and they're like, yeah, it's fun, creepy. Let's do it. Like, mm-hmm. oh my god. Okay. Anyway. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Manga Book Club, Anime Summit, Manga Book Club. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Manga Book Club. <laughs> Today is Sunday, October 28th. It, we are just about four or three days away from uh, Halloween. And Ooh. for today's Manga Book Club... We are decided to put Akira on hold, as you heard in the last at the end of the last meeting. We put Akira on hold, and t- for today we decided to read Tomi by Junji Ito. Um, Junji Ito, if you don't know, is he is a famous horror manga artist. He's he even just is like a famous horror artist by itself, like mm-hmm. manga aside. Um, he's he's still alive. He's fifty five years old. Um, but he yep. he wrote some of the most famous horror stories. Actually, a couple seasons ago, in anime, they decided to animate this anime called the Junji Ito Collection or something. And it was just every episode was a different uh, thing. Which I have, I only saw some of it. And I didn't really, it was almost kind of hard to get without reading the manga. So, but anyway, um, if you, they, s- go ahead, sorry. Uh, they... They did a, um, an OVA for Tomi. Okay, that's right. They did. Yep. There's also, um, for Tomi, the one we're reading, or the one we're talking about tonight, there is also, like, seven or eight live-action movies. Oh, really? Yeah, there's eight of them. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I just, I just read it. Eight. First one is just called Tomi, <laughs> and then yeah. it's called Replay. It's It's almost like... There was like an agreement or something. Like after the third film, they were just like, "Let's just keep making these," because <laughs> the, so basically, Tomi is this. Okay, just in summary, Tomi is the titular character. She's a beautiful woman, girl, whatever, and she is this just this monstrous creature. She appears beautiful, and whatever, but she has this power to put people under her spell with her beauty and control them. She drives people insane. And she is, in essence, immortal. She, you can, mm-hmm. 
you can cut off parts of her and they'll grow back and then those parts will grow into other tomies so like it's just like the stuff and the problems that she gets into uh with every arc or every chapter is is just like ugh. um it gets really and it shows it you know what i mean like her head gets cut mm-hmm. off there's parts where she uh partakes in cannibalism to fuel her regenerative abilities mm-hmm. and things like yeah. that so so with the live action films um you know they they they, they just thought well we can just keep making more of these cuz <laughs> You know, she could be, we could be talking about a different Tomy in this film, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it almost kind of works that it's a different actress each time because it's still it's still a long ha- uh, girl with long black hair mm-hmm. who's Japanese and is only slightly different looking than previous actors, you know. So, um, yeah, the last one to come out came out in 2011 and it was called Tomy Unlimited. And uh, the one before that was Tomy vs. Tomy. <laughs> she was kind of like an anti-hero fighting her yeah then there was revenge well because well yeah because in there there is like a chapter where it's called you know like one of the chapters is called assassins and mm-hmm. yeah then there's replay rebirth re yeah revengeance revenge re zero deluxe re zero <laughs> tommy the movie, the game, the manga, the movie, the game. Five. Part two. So much. Deluxe. HD. HD. Remix. By EA. By EA. DLC not included. Anyway. <laughs> we just, uh, Danny had a great idea to read this today because of Spooptober. It's the weekend before Halloween. By the time you're listening to this, it's the day after Halloween, but I don't really, you know, fuck you. Um, oh, or you know what? Just just for, just because it's the holiday, I could upload it for Wednesday morning, you know, like whatever, for since that'll be Halloween. So never mind. Don't listen to me. Anyway, here you go. Tell me. So not all of us finished it, but that's okay because it's kind of like every chapter is like an anthology. It's like a different... It's a different... Yeah, it's a different story every time. So. There's some some characters go from one chapter to the next and everything, yeah. like the photographer yeah. girl. But um, mm-hmm. you could read the chapters individually. I feel like you could. Um, the first one is kind of like how the, the like how she died in the first place. If that was yeah, if that was real, you know, like she could have been somebody else before that happened but um basically Tommy was on a school trip with uh, a, a class the woodworking class and um she was like hitting on the teacher all like you know all weird and stuff and he was like get away from me and stuff like that and she ends up falling off of like the little cliff that they're sitting on and it's high yeah. enough to where she yeah. dies mm-hmm. um then they yeah, she, she doesn't quite die she like knocks out or something yeah because as they're then they decide oh let's chop her up and then yeah and, as you do and then Might as well finish the job yeah because they they wanted to cover up and they didn't want to get in trouble and they're like well Tommy's a bitch anyway and she's fucking weird and she's a she's a sociopath let's just kill her you know whatever and then as they were chopping her up she like kind of coughs up blood and was like Ugh, and then they just kill her um mm-hmm. Only to discover, like, that at the, at the end of the chapter, one of the girls is like, I don't even know if that even really happened. Like, that's so crazy to me. Blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And she turns, like, around this cliff, and then there's, like, a, re- a Tomy, like, partly regenerating under the cliff with some membranes and uh, other... Gobbly gook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, a personality and everything like that. <laughs> Yeah, she's like sitting there smiling. She almost looks like she's crucified under this cliff. But um then now then the next chapter goes and it's like it's back at school and there's this other shit and happening and it's she's at a different mm-hmm. school now and yeah. So what <laughs> It's uh when was this written? Hold on a second. Oh, uh 9 1987. It ran from 1987 to 2000. Um, in a magazine called Monthly Halloween Nemoki. So good. 
So good. So what do <laughs> like, you guys what do you guys think? How far did you guys get? Dan, let's start with Danny. It's because I've been talking about this all year. Um. I've been about well, this. so there there's like two versions of Tomy. There's you know the original version that came out uh, when it was released and published and everything. So there's mm-hmm. volumes in that one. Um, but then later, you know, since the the manga was so widely popular, they decided to um, uh, republish it as um, an deluxe version. So they kind of like combined it all the chapters into one big, into one big book. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there was some little miscommunications along the line on like which version to read and stuff <laughs> yeah. so, um but i was reading the deluxe version and i on that version there's about 20 chapters and an extra chapter uh called um afterward which is just like i guess uh jimji ito talking or something i didn't really read it um, but I got up to chapter 11, which is, uh, it's titled Hair. And... Oh, that one was freaky. Yeah, that one, that one was went, freaky. That one, actually, I think, so far, is one of my favorites. Uh, the painter one was kind of okay, mediocre, in a way. Um, Assassin's was pretty good. Uh, you know, like these random guys like going off and trying to kill Tomi and everything. You know, she got mm-hmm. stabbed, and then you know this bypasser just like came and quote unquote saved her. And you know, she told him like, "Oh, you know, when I die, like bury me in a secluded area." Mm-hmm. So that was kind of interesting, and like how he was just like going in- insane and stuff, and like. In, when the like parasite thing came out of Tomi's uh, chest and stuff and told him to go and kill the witch in a way, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just him finding her and like how this this one Tomi had all these memories of all the stuff that he did with this head uh, that he was like taking care of, like just it, it was really incredible, like how, uh, you know, Ito-san just like came up with, you know, a, a human just going insane, mm-hmm. just by like, wait, you know, who who was I taking care of? You know, was it her? Wasn't it her? Who do I kill? I'm not sure. You know, just like all the confusion and everything like that it was really intriguing. Does that mean so, they all share your mem- memories, or is this just guy going insane? Ah, uh, see that—that's the thing that you know, y- you don't really get an answer from, especially in that chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, because if I remember, correctly, it's never, it's never really brought up in the other ones. Like it doesn't. Um, yeah, yeah. Like it's just—it's just a real mystery on, on like. The whole process of like whenever Tomi gets killed and then she gets regenerated, um, if they all share memories, I'm sure they do. I- I'm pretty sure they do because like, um, like she knows when she's back to life. Yeah, like yeah, because because the head was all like, oh, you have to burn her or else you know she'll come back to life and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. um. But I feel like they, you know, the the uh, the multiples have like their own sort of personality, but they might share the same memories, because clearly the other told me wanted to kill the head. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, that's also a possibility. But again, you know, they don't really they don't really clarify on you know, if they share memories or anything like that. Because the teacher, you know, in the beginning of the first two chapters, you know, he went, like, mentally insane and, like, wanted to, like, 
see if there was like a cure and stuff. So, and like he vanished, you know, after after waterfall bison. So far, I haven't seen him yet again. Mm -hmm. So, but um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm enjoying it. You know, uh, I'm not too keen on like scary stuff really, but I. Uh, scary stuff when reading it especially is intriguing to me mm. and Junji Ito is pretty much one of my favorite horror manga artists and I, I knew what I was getting into um, but Tomi isn't really that scary it's more disturbing yeah. really so yeah. whereas like Uzumaki for example it was fucking creepy Here's so. the here's the thing about it though, like, um, and by the way, let me take this moment to say that, uh, the people who are here right now is me and Danny, Relax with Snorlax, and Seneca are back again. Back again, DeBellers isn't here because he refused to read something scary. Um, <laughs> He's a little bitch. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the owner is here. He's been part of our Discord for a long time. He's super tight. He's super awesome. I love him. He's here today because he wanted to read this with us. So thank you for being here. Um. The thing I will say, though, um, the thing about horror, hmm, let's talk about, just real quick, I want to point out, American horror movies. For the past 10 years, they've been nothing but, like, let's have a real quiet moment and then jump out and scare them. My favorite horror movies are the ones that are, you either have a slasher that has crazy powers or you have a horror movie that's unsettling. It's mm -hmm. even you can even do that with where there is a monster or a slasher. You know what I mean? You have to create an environment. When you watch movies like Insidious or The Unborn or something like one of those, um, it's not. It's not. It's just you. Just you're just out to make me jump. Like you're, or or, or it's like a gore fest, like Hostel. You know what I mean? It's like. You can have gore, but you have to make it unsettling. You have to make it creepy. Like, you have to make it... Right. You know what I mean? The thing about Junji Ito is, like, the stuff is fantasy, right? It's not, like, you know, it's it's mystical. Mm -hmm. But he still creates the most unsettling things out of ordinary things. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like spirals, like we talked in the beginning um, before we started. And then, he, in this case, he took... He took the idea of someone being a regenerative, someone with regenerative powers, you know, you think of like. Who's a sociopath. Yeah. Yeah. Th then let's just add all this twisted shit on her. Herself. Yeah. Yeah. You think of like Gandalf the Grey and like he yeah. can come back as Gandalf the White. And it's like, oh, cool. That's a regenerative mm -hmm. thing. And but then like the way he does it is he's creating an atmosphere of creepiness and like possessiveness and sociopathy and it's just like mm -hmm. the way he Obsession. draws it yeah, yeah 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 um yeah no seriously so uh the rest of you though uh what do you guys think of tommy well if you didn't tell me it was a horror story i wouldn't know it was a horse because i've been reading so much berserk like oh. just the drugs and whatnot i'm just so used to it and like the first chapter is showing like that girl. I'm just like I, it's <laughs> like berserk. <laughs> but then it's like I like since you guys told me, oh yeah, this is a horror manga. I'm like okay, and then I'm like, oh, this is unsettling. But probably if I didn't know that, I probably wouldn't be like any different reading it. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, after the first, um, I don't know the first like five chapters or so once you kind of understand the the formula for how it's gonna go um it's it was considerably less creepy for me it just it kind of turned into like what's what's the new um like end product gonna be mm -hmm. like how the the ways that who's gonna be he... who's gonna be obsessed with her next like yeah yeah and then like the, the ways did keep in it the original in a lot of ways mm -hmm. like there was the heroin there was like a... the one 
that they like turned her into soup and she oh, was god. Stuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't read that one I yet. I didn't read that one, it's just the way you said <laughs> it. It was just like, <laughs> damn. Uh, All right, cool. Ahead, I'm, ex I want some I'm excited about soup. The carpet mm. one was really pretty. Yeah. yeah, the carpet one was kind of weird. Um, at first, I, I see, I look at the cover, and I'm like, what is that? I don't, like, so like you see fingers, and like I'm, I, like I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. And then when like when it gets to it, when when there's like that pool of blood, and you're like, oh shit, that's what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Yeah. Um, waterfall. What? What was it? Which one was it? Revenge was kind of weird. Did what you guys read Revenge? Revenge was uh, with the hikers that was in the snow and stuff, and they found oh, her. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. I thought that uh, one was... That one... When there wasn't that much to it. I think it was... I like yeah. Was just... I mean, it was still kind of odd in a way. I like how um, it's like she's... She's just kind of like a vessel to tell these different stories and have these different settings, you know. Like she, she's she's um, the 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 constant here, but there's like so many different um, places that uh, Junji Ito takes it, you know. And that's mm -hmm. what I really liked about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I think aside from. Aside from hair, mansion was was pretty interesting. Mm. Um, was, that the, was that the one with like the big, the like monster thing? With, like the yes, worm? yeah, like the scent, yeah, the worm like yeah. uh monster. Oh, yeah, nice. I kind of like that. That one was very creepy and stuff like that. So, um, I think my favorite drawing in that chapter was. With the two heads in the in the jar, mm. mansion, yeah, yeah, and it's mansion. like got that old it's guy. Page, yeah, it's page uh, two fifty six, um, and like Tommy was sitting in the in the chair and she was like playing with the water and like the mm -hmm. quote unquote old man was all like Tommy stop playing with that you know put that lid back on and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that was that was really interesting and stuff and how what's his name or what like, like the the girl you know the more she like went into the house and stuff i like, think she realized what was really going on. Mm -hmm. so there's also this theme of the obsession with the men that she mm -hmm. you know puts spells Collects. on yeah yeah there's also this theme of like chopping her up like oh yeah like she she's put this these, these just men just want to yeah. chop her up all the time, and it's like maybe that's what she's into. Hey, man! <laughs> Some people are uh... people have them fetishes, man. Like, <laughs> but um, but what I'm really interested in, you know, especially in the chapter mansion with that big monster, like I'm really interested on how it became, you know, how that mon like that creature became like mm. that you know um because obviously at, at the at the end you know you find out that the old man isn't really the old man it's mm -hmm. the teacher so um and like in the in the hospital chapter like they yeah. when they did the kidney transplant they, yes like, someone someone else turned into tomi so maybe yes. that was, I don't know. It's weird. That was yeah, one of my it's, favorites. Yeah, yeah, that, that one was, was really pretty good. cool. Yeah. I enjoyed Just that an one. average day in Berserk. <laughs> <laughs> I really oh. liked in, in that chapter, one of my um, favorite panels was when the, I forget his name, but the male patient, he was like trying to figure oh, out. Oh, with, with the with appendix. Yeah, he was like he yeah. was trying to figure out what they were. My my favorite panels are always the ones where she's like drawn super pretty. And yeah. in that one, he's like trying to figure out what they were doing in the basement and he goes down yes. there and you've seen you've seen like these monstrous images of her like spawning from a kidney and all this stuff. 
and it's been really gross and then he like opens the door and shines the flashlight and, and it's this like gorgeous girl just sitting in a tank of water yeah the basement was, yeah i loved it yeah yeah that was a really good chapter so she spawns from like whatchamacallit herself right yeah what happens if she poops <laughs> I did uh, read there was a there was a part where she can also regenerate or clone herself by if there's like a baby and they inject some of her blood in the baby, the baby will grow up to be her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when she's like really distressed, she starts like, multiplying within yeah. herself. Yeah. 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 Like if someone it, it was in a photo what was it photography oh photo where like the girl was telling her that she was sick and she was a monster monster and stuff mm -hmm. and she's all you know she all of a sudden started getting a headache and like you know coming out of her head was another spawn of her mm -hmm. so and they were like she was like cut it off and they just ended up cutting her head off <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god dude it's disturbing like... oh dang we killed him <laughs> Okay, so. Um. Yeah. No. It's uh. Ugh. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like that's how that's what you. But in like that's how it's doing its job then, right? Because it's like yeah, yeah. we're we're reading it and we're we're talking about it and we're just like <laughs> like <laughs> that to me is like good. That's good horror. Like yeah. Don't don't wait to. Don't make it all quiet and I'm all of a sudden turn the page and have something scary to make me jump or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I like think there there's a reason. Yeah. I mean, well, there can be, like, when you turn the page and. Um, I don't know. I, it I, just says boo. I see. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's the thing, like, with horror manga, especially with um, Junji Ito stuff. Like, mm. I don't, I'm, I don't get scared. And. The reason I think the reason why is because it's not moving, and there's no like creepy music or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, because I don't, I don't do well with scary movies. Mm -hmm. Also, know, how I, there's no shadows. Yeah, like I, I really, I don't like getting scared. So, I, it, whenever I end up miraculously watching a scary movie, I need someone with me and I need a security blanket to protect myself. Also back so, against the wall. Uh anything that can protect me from like getting scared. <laughs> so um but yeah like I I enjoy reading horror stuff because I can put I can put an, an image to my to myself on what it looks like. So it's not like moving. It's not like making a sound. It's not talking. It's just in my own head. It's in my own imagination. So, yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought that I wasn't scared. Like I like I I am the same way. I get really scared during um, scary movies, and it, it stays with me for like weeks. But um, yeah, I thought that this I was okay with this. And I was reading it yesterday, and then <laughs> last night, this is going to sound so stupid, last night I was showering, right? And every everything was going great, and then I, like, I felt a hair on my shoulder, and I have, like, short... Oh, no! Hair. <laughs> I have short brown hair, so I, like, I pull the hair off, like, no big deal, and it just keeps going and going, and then I look at it, and it's this pitch black, super long hair, and I freaked out the fuck out for like 0.2 seconds until I remembered that I live with my Taiwanese mother and it was probably <laughs> her hair. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's kind you of know. funny. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. But <laughs> no, it is funny. You know, it's kind of like after like the first like, I guess like body image or whatever. Like later that night, I'm just like going in front of the mirror and I'm just like, I'm like, how scary would it be if like that face appeared right there. And I'm like, wait, I shouldn't think about that. Ah, dang it. Now I'm paranoid. <laughs> yeah. And so then, like, wake up later in the night just to go to the bathroom, and then I just sit in front of the mirror. I'm like, hey, about that thought again. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm too tired to think about that. 
I just want it bad. Right, right. Um, yeah, man, it's fucking creepy. <laughs> like, uh, it's kind of perfect. Like, uh, you know, like I'll, all around Halloween, normally I'll watch movies with Trisha or whatever, and this was kind of a good opportunity to like read something creepy. I do have a horror manga on my shelf in my little collection of manga, but I've never, I've never read it, and I don't know if anyone else has heard of it. But I'll take a look at it again. But this was kind of perfect because I mean, these are considered classics. Like most stories by Jinji Ito are considered uh, to mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. well known classics, and um, in this case, I, I agree that they are timeless because even though. Like, this guy was writing stuff that's, like, in 20, 2020 in 1987. You know what I mean? Like, this stuff is yeah. it's violent and unsettling and disturbing in its own right. Like, there's mm-hmm. there's a lot of... It's almost like Tomi herself, when she, when she curses a dude, she shows... She's, like, showing people or pulling out yeah. who they really are, which might be an yeah. obsessive terrible person you know what i mean yeah um yeah they're sh- he's showing them their true colors so. right 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 and the yamazaki guy even if even he was pretty possessed by her but there were times where he was still kind of like i don't know Having what's going doubts, on like, yeah. yeah which yeah. which might like, mean I don't know that what's wrong with me yeah which might mean that he's actually not that way he, as yeah. much as she tried to pull it out of him you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah so, well, I feel like I feel like that's the same thing with um, uh, I'm trying to remember uh, his name was Tetsuo. Ironically enough, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, like he even him, you know, when when he when he at the end, um, he he was like having doubts, like when when he cut off like the head of the tomoli corpse and the head told him like okay now burn burn this this dead body and he's like what like i can't do that you know i made a promise and everything and then you know like after a while he you notice like he started having dark circles around his eyes and all this other stuff and and he was gonna go kill the the other tomi and then like when he finally found her and stuff and like he was telling her telling him you know oh so like you know i want to you know i want to like show appreciation like how how you saved me and everything and like you cooked good food and and, you know he was just going crazy like what the hell is going on with you know so yeah it's kind of interesting on how she manipulates all these different types of guys yeah Mm -hmm. so um, mm-hmm. It's kind of the same thing with the painter guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that guy. Like, the reason I liked that one, um, I I kind of jumped around and I didn't read all of it because I kind of was trying to read as much as I could. Mm-hmm. But the only ones I read fully were all of Volume One, um, mm-hmm. or most of Volume One. But the artist one, the reason I thought that was kind of cool, and I'm going to go back and finish reading that after we're done here. The reason that's kind of cool is because that kind of plays into, like, the artist descending into madness kind of thing with an obsessive, yes. being obsessed over a subject. Um, there's yes. plenty of horror stories and plenty of other kinds of thrillers that are like that or tragedies that are like that. Um, mm-hmm. Edgar Allan Poe being, like, someone who in, in real life considered to be one of those people. Um, mm-hmm. Vincent Van Gogh considered to be one of those amazing people. Amazing writer, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, amazing writer. And um, yeah, he you know he wrote stories like that too. Um, um, the band Alisana when they when they dropped the album uh, The Emptiness, they wrote a story that goes along with the album, and it was about an artist who became obsessed with his lover and then became obsessed with his work over his lover and then he went crazy mm-hmm. and um uh it, it just it's cool like it, that that was it's kind of cool how he there's still a little bit of inspiration from other things 
mm-hmm. or other archetypes that he grabs and does that stuff. So mm-hmm. I thought that was cool. I'm going to finish reading that one. Yeah, the um, painter one was in the anime. I think maybe in other story. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Oh, yes, yes, it was. It was in the anime, the painter one. Yeah, just I think, I feel like there wasn't two of them. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I did also find it pretty interesting that whenever someone took a picture of Tomi, there was that like or like evil aura coming off her mm-hmm. face. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's really cool. So and like that that also shows. I feel like that's another interesting thing about that is that like you know she's not normal. <laughs> like she's not human you know like and and it's telling and it's giving you a sign like get the fuck away from her like don't mm-hmm. don't associate with her but mm-hmm. you know these these victims are not really listening so right. um, did, anyone and- else, did anyone else feel kind of bad for her tell me yeah well I mean here's the thing <laughs> And I think that's I think that's 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 a good question because I I mean I kind of did, and yeah. again, I kind of did in the sense that it was like obviously she's a terrible person, but yeah. kind of like a uh, against her own well I don't know if she wills it but everyone she gets close to ends up wanting to kill her, and mm. it just I don't know it just it made me kind of sad for her like what a lonely existence. That must be. You know what Almost that. Like you know blur. what that means. You know what that means, Liz. What? You know what that means. She's a sociopath. Well, okay. So here's the no. thing. Here's the thing, right? What Liz says is absolutely true. Lonely existence, and there there can be something horrible, horrible and horrifying about that. Mm-hmm. You can. You can go through life, trying to live every day as best as you can. You know, doing what you do is the best in your ability. You you know, you go to school, you go to work, you come home, you get something out of the fridge to eat, you hang out with your friends, you record a podcast, or you hang out with your manga book club friends, whatever, and you go to bed, and you do the next day, whatever. And then you turn, suddenly you turn 80, and you get old, and you, you die. You go to the next life, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if you were immortal, if I was immortal... I would have to just, if I was stuck at the age I'm at now, while everyone else around me aged, I would just be watching all of you die. Okay. So in 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years from now, that ha- would have to drive me insane at some point. Right. You know, um, all of her her witchy and monstrous abilities aside, um, except for the, the, the re- regenerative part, that's really sad. Mm-hmm. And that's also really disturbing. Because maybe... Because they never say... And I read this somewhere. I didn't read it in the in the manga because I didn't finish it, obviously. But I read it somewhere that they never explicitly stay, like, state her origin. Right, right. Which means she could have been alive for literally thousands of years before yeah. this. Right. And... When you think about that, it's <laughs> I almost kind of like that they didn't say it because it's like that's mm-hmm. really sad. That would have had to drive her insane. She might have in the thousand some plus years that she's been around, or the five hundred plus years, or whatever, she might have learned how to use these regenerative abilities through some kind of means or something, and that's why she's still alive. You know, or she she might have learned how to cast a curse on men and whatever and. Mm-hmm what have you i don't know but it's that's really sad if i was immortal and i was stuck at this age and everyone just around me started going and then i met a new set of friends i married somebody else or i was in a relationship with somebody else um and i just kept seeing you know i kept seeing everyone die Mm -hmm. that would have to drive you mad at some point yeah and that's just like oh man yeah that is actually really depressing which is also like (laughs) Which can yeah, also play into horror very well. You know what I mean? You could clone yourself and just hang out with yourself. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, like the episode of The Twilight Zone where the one guy just wanted to, like, be by himself and read. 
and then his glasses break, and now he, he like, at the very end. Like, he, fuck, I can't. He finally gets what he wants, but then his glasses break. Um. Okay, well, I didn't mean to bring it there, sorry. But, like, <laughs> um, any final thoughts? I think I think we, we got it all out there pretty good. Yeah. Another interesting thing, it seems like, um, like uh, she... She's like fueled by the desire of men because in their their one chapter of Pinky, um, like she gets a, all her fingers ever and then they all grow up into mm-hmm. Domies. But the Pinky one is they like he the guy tried to burn it, so the Pinky one is really burnt up. But and but uh, so like all the other fingers are you grow up to be the perfect Domie and the, then like all start mm-hmm. the messing with her. And then mm-hmm. there's the the guy was was an outcast and he felt bad for her. And then she, just as he like he, she he started to like desire her like she she said he said he said he loved her and then uh, mm-hmm. after right after that like that that's when she got better and then she just left him. Yeah. Right. And then he's so like, wait, no, why are you leaving? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. That's also another thing, you know, like like her. Her victims that she picks sometimes, um, they, you know, they they're still obsessed with her, and mm-hmm. um, and they're still trying to find her, which is kind of interesting, in a way. So, cause like, you know, you see them and they like ruin their lives. Like for example, in in Hair, the the father. Who, like found her and like became obsessed right. with her and like you know pretty much he was um um uh, her her pawn and like when she found like no use for him and stuff you know he took her hair and stuff well obviously she killed him she he killed her mm-hmm. in the in the process but af- after a while you know she came back obviously mm-hmm. um and you know and you saw that like he was still obsessed with her because he kept her her hair so that was pretty interesting to see i mean yeah hair was pretty much my favorite uh i want to say like my second favorite one Mm. out of the chapters that i've read so far i really like the waterfall the same one too yeah yeah um that one had one of the the best illustrations, like when the, oh, the yeah. hair shoots out of every out of her corner. face. God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was just like, whoa, that wasn't expected <laughs> at all. Cool, yeah. sweet. I actually personally, um, I kind of liked. Where was it? I. Um. Uh, oh no. Is it? Shoot. Um, god damn it. Here we go. Um, when, when the girl, when her best friend came over to her house and stuff, because she was trying to talk to, to Tomi, and it was like a week that Mm -hmm. she didn't hear, you know, that she didn't hear her and stuff. So, um, you know, her friend came back, like, came over to visit her and, and like, told her, oh, you know, in order for you to, to talk to her, you know, you have to, you have to put on her hair. Mm-hmm. And I found it interesting um, that, you know, the what the mom came back and stuff and, you know, wanted to see, you know, how the, how her daughter was. And when her daughter turned around and like saw the hair like you know casually all the hairs in her face Mm -hmm. that was beautifully illustrated it was so So, freaky yeah it was it's awesome yeah (laughs) i mean it's awesome like i think it was fucking awesome i hated it in a really good way (laughs) yeah so so the thing about sen though is that's really funny is (laughs) she fucking what what is it (laughs) She was, <laughs> she was on, we were on Twitter, like I was on Twitter, and she fucking tweets, she puts out this tweet that says, <laughs> let me find it, hold on. <laughs> you're 
You don't have to call me out like this. No, dude, it's fucking funny. <laughs> she put yeah. <laughs> she puts out this tweet that's like. <laughs> she's like it'd be great if the entire horror film industry could just like not advertise ever again thanks <laughs> and i was like please tell me the story behind this and she's like i'm a pussy and can't watch scary movie trailers okay there i said it <laughs> <laughs> fucking laugh so hard that shit was so fucking funny uh so i give her mad props though for reading uh no i'm i'm glad i did this was really good. Yeah, no, it's, I think Even I'm going to... I'm going to have trouble showering from now on. It's okay. <laughs> you know that reminds, it reminds me of that scene from uh, The Grudge or Juan. No. Stop. <laughs> yeah, she's like showering and the hand comes out the back of her head. God. Right <laughs> Son's dying. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, well... Um, Wait. Who, ha- who here has read Uzumaki? I read Uzumaki. Uh-huh. Okay. Who else did? Not me. I haven't. Nobody else. else. Not me. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sam, which one do you like better? What do you mean? Which one do you like better, Uzumaki or or? Oh. Um, I think the imagery in Uzumaki is a little more iconic. Um, and I think that's a little more. It's just like, dude, you took spirals and made a horror out of it. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, <laughs> an entire village, like, you know, an entire town is just obsessed over it. Yeah. I think the yeah. ending is really good, too. Um, yeah. Oh, way, no, it is. The way they bring the way it. it ended. Yeah. So I will say Uzumaki. But, because okay. I, that's, and I might be a little biased because that was the only one I ever read before this. Right. Right. Um, yeah. It's so, it, it's definitely. It's so iconic and um, w- one of the best uh, horror stories that he's ever written, I feel. Um, aside from his short story, which I found really interesting. Um, it's called The Enigma of Amagari Falls. Oh, that- I read that one. Yeah, that one's really creepy. That, that one's one really... scared me. Yeah, that one scared. That one actually scared me when I read it. Yeah, I, I, I hate it. The, that one, I was very frightened. You know that if you have, if you have a fear, if you are claustrophobic, that yeah, uh. yeah, that will give you anxiety without a doubt. Um, that one was absolutely but, horrible. But at the same time, I loved it. Yeah. You know. Oh, like, hey, it, I gotta it, go right now. Um, oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, I do. Oh, shoot. Okay, see you, Relax with Snorlax. Thank you for coming. Oh, okay. Bye. Peace out. See ya. That sucks. Um, But, yeah. Yeah. No, Uzumaki is very iconic. And that Uzumaki was one of the first uh, Jinji Ito uh, stories that I've ever read. So That's how I heard about him. Because there was, like, this group of photos being shared on Facebook. It was, like, of all, like, the... Im- the iconic images from the comic and um mm-hmm. i was like what is this and my friend kelsey was the one who shared it and she was like she was like i have no idea like but it looks cool as, uh, it looks cool as fuck and then i yeah. looked it up and then i read it and i was like wow that was messed up and i feel really gross i want to go <laughs> take a shower <laughs> the only um, other one that i've read was the the holes in the mountain one yeah i don't know what that's called that was the the one uh, that me and Danny were talking about. Yeah, the the enigma the it's called the enigma of Amagari Fault. That's what it's called. They just so, get they're and, just like they when the holes are in the mountains they just like crawl in them right like because they're like yeah because they yeah, all so have their own hole. Yeah, so in that one yeah so in that one each person in the town has their own hole. So and if you find your hole, you're just drawn to it and you have yeah. to go in. Like, it, there's like, fits no them perfectly and yeah, there's no like, there's nothing stopping it, and and there were two characters that found their holes and they covered their up their holes, but you know they they just ended up going in, you know, and they died. So Sam, you should read it. It's good. Well, they didn't. Yeah. Exactly die. 
They well, they no just... spoilerinos. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I'm not gonna say anything. But almost like it's <laughs> that's kind of like I suppose it's kind of like a metaphor for trying to fill something that can't be filled, right? Like. Yeah. Like so. inside of you. Wow, it's really depressing. Okay. Anyway, let's move. <laughs> let's move on from that. Anyway. <laughs> Save it um, for the for the Amagari uh, 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 Fault podcast. Yeah, save it for the Amagari Fault podcast. Um, wow, we went almost an hour on that one. Okay, so I'll tell you what, that was really creepy, and I'm going to continue reading as much as I can before I puke. So, like, um, seriously, you guys, um, if you haven't read any Junji Ito stories, please read them. Uh, I've only read some of Tomi and uh, Uzumaki, but... You should definitely read both of these for sure mm-hmm. um, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, I don't think I'll be watching. There is a movie for Uzumaki, too, which I didn't know about. It came out like in early there 2000s. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a live action one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Then there's like eight movies for Tomi. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I'm glad you joined us. Thank you. Relax with Snorlax, even though he left. Thank you, the owner. And Seneca for joining me and Danny again. Um, shout out to Ed because he joined the Manga Book Club and has, hasn't been here for one meeting. He's a bitch. Uh, <laughs> and shout out to DeBellers, DB, because he uh, wussed out on reading uh, Tomi with us. You're a wussy. You should still read it. <laughs> we still love you, you wuss. Uh, <laughs> um. But no, seriously, uh, thank you guys. It was awesome. I'm going to upload this. Oh, you know what? I'll try to upload this on Halloween. We'll do that. And then, um, yeah, so um, next week or next meeting, so when you hear this like three or four days from now, we're hopping back into Akira, and you got to read one, two, three, and four if you haven't yet. And for those who are reading it right now, you got to read four. So complete volume four. And, um, or was it four and five or just four? No, it's just four, right? Just four. Just four. Yeah, yeah just four. We, we just talked about volume three, uh, last week because, um, I don't think any of us, I, I know myself, I didn't get to finish, uh, volume four. Right. Cause I didn't know. Cause we had that one week where we, we got sick and then we, oh, yeah. but you know, we, we were trying to figure out how to, to, to fit in a horror thing and we did today. So that's okay. Yeah. yeah so just yeah. volume four. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do that. Uh, links.animesummit.net. You can find everything right there. Please sub to both YouTube channels YouTube.com slash Anime Summit and Anime Summit Extra. And we are the Manga Book Club. This has been the Manga Book Club from the Anime Summit Podcast. We love you.